Hello world, this one's going to be about an interesting method to uppercase, lowercase, and swap case letters. Uh, let's start by looking at the first letter of the English alphabet, A. We can use our vision and the knowledge of our brains to say that it's the capital letter A. But for computers, they can only deal with ones and zeros, the binary number system. The system of binary digits, or as more commonly called, bits where basically 1 indicates the presence of charge and 0 the absence. And a sequence of zeros and 1s can and do represent the capital letter A. So every time you type the capital letter A, this sequence of bits is what the computer gets. ASCII, the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, mapped these bit sequences to characters. Had they not, then probably A's in one computer could have meant semicolons in another. This binary value equals 32, I'm sorry, 65 in our decimal number system. And here are some more ASCII values for other letters. On a side note, you can get these values by passing a character with a percent %u to a printf, just like this one, which outputs a 65. Or you could use a percent %c with a number to print a character associated with that number. This would give us a lowercase b. Mind that there are numbers that don't correspond to a valid character, which will mostly give you some junk. Now looking back at these values, we can see a pattern, a relation between the uppercase and the lowercase letters. Uh, the difference between the corresponding upper and lowercase letters is always 32. Using that fact, we can write the uppercasing function um, by checking if the character's value lies between those of lowercase a and lowercase z, if that's true, we return that value minus 32 because that's what we saw in that pattern. If not, we just return whatever was given to the function. In a very similar fashion, we can write the lowercasing function. And this is how a case swapper would look. If it's between lowercase a and z, we return a value that's 32 less than the given. If it's between uppercase A and Z, we return a value that's 32 more than the given. If none of those uh, come true, uh, it means that it's not a letter and it would make no sense to assign it a case. So we just return uh, what was given. We can take a look at another pattern uh, in these binary versions. We saw that there was a difference of 32, and as 32 is 2 to the power of 5, these sequences only differ at that bit. The uppercase letters have a 0, and the lowercase letters have a 1 there. So we'll need to uh, have a, a way to just affect this bit and keep the rest as is. We do that by a process called masking. Let's take these two bits. Just like we have arithmetic operators that operate on numbers, we also have the not, the and, the or, and the xor that operate on individual bits of data. These are called the bitwise operators. There are others as well, uh, which I'll probably take up in another video. For now, we'll start by understanding the and op. We'll call the left column the input, and the right the mask. If you add with a zero, the output is always going to be a zero. If you add with a one, the input is going to be preserved. In other words, if any of the bits is not set, the output will not be set, which implies that for the output to be set, all the bits need to be set. If you OR with a zero, the output is going to be the input. If you OR with a one, the output will be a one, irrespective of the input. In other words, if any of the bits is set, the output will also be set. XOR is similar to OR as it preserves the input when 0. But when you XOR with a 1, the input is flipped, meaning a 0 becomes a 1 and a 1 becomes a 0. And these are called truth tables. As for the NOT operator, it's a unary one, unlike the others we saw, which operates on a single bit. Uh, it turns a 0 to a 1 and a 1 to a 0. Let's take 
the lower casing situation. Top one desired input and the bottom one is the desired output. What mask would convert the uppercase letter to a lowercase one? We only need that yellow X to output a one and we need the other mask, uh, other mask bits to not change the incoming bits. We know that oring with a one will give us a one so let's have a one here and oring with a zero will preserve the input so we'll have zeros in other places and this makes up our mask for uh, lower casing. When we OR A with this mask, the bitwise operator is going to be applied to each of the corresponding bits and knowing what OR does, we can see that it'll output the ASCII value for the lowercase a. When we do the same with an already lowercase letter, it would just output the same case. ORing it with a capital C would give us lowercase c. Now, the value of this mask in decimals would be 32. So, our lowercasing function does this. Although, it has to be given a valid letter character. If not, it would return something unexpected. Let's come back to our A's. How would we go about uppercasing? The active position of the mask wouldn't change, but the rule would. Now, we need to get a zero at that position and leave the other bits unchanged. We know that ending with a zero will always give a zero. So let's have a zero here. And ending with a one will leave the input unchanged. So we'll have ones in other places for the uppercasing mask. And now we'll need to end it with the mask to get the uppercase version. Operating a knot on this mask will flip all the bits and we get the same sequence as before, that is 32. Uh, we can also write this as mask being equal to uh, the knot of 32. So our uppercasing function would be doing this. Back here again, if we XOR with this mask, which will flip the bit wherever we have a one in the mask, uh, we're going to be swapping cases. Here's another example. And this is how we can write the swap casing function. As an exercise, you could write the is upper and is lower functions using the same method. All right, uh, that was it for this one. Thanks for watching.